Michael Lynch. Congratulations. And we saw the images of you when it was announced. Describe that moment for us. It's, it's as though I'd sort of entered into the counterfactual of, of my own writing, um, that I'd, I'd entered into a, a world where um, that the real was no longer quite real. That's how I can describe it. It's just, it was surreal and it was extraordinary. And I actually didn't believe that I was going to win. So I was in the room feeling the nerves of the moment, feeling that sort of metamorphic pressure of being in the book of prize ceremony, but I didn't actually fully believe that I was going to win. And so um, when it happened, I, 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 I don't think I could process it, if I'm really honest. I don't think I could process it. Well, I interviewed you back in 2015, I think it was, when I um, introduced you as a major new Irish talent. That's eight years on, you've won the biggest literature prize in the English speaking world. And this book took four years to write. And you have been through quite a lot in that time. Describe the journey for us. Yeah, my gosh, I don't even know myself at this point. I mean, I, I've had, I, uh, I mean, when I started writing the book, I had a newborn son, and by the time I finished writing it, he, he was riding a bicycle. So you, you begin writing a book uh, as one person, and you are a different person by the end. I've also had, I've also had a brush with major illness during, I mean, after, just shortly after finishing the book, you know, I had a brush with serious illness, and um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like I'm sort of reinventing myself at the moment now that this, this there was a Paul Lynch prior to all this, and I'm a new guy now, and I, I'm, I'm still figuring it out. Well, let's talk about the book then. The judges said it captures the social and political anxieties of our moment. And Prophet Song imagines an island under fascist control. Describe it to us. Yeah, Prophet Song, it's, it's, it's really the story of Ellie Stack. Um, she's a mother of four. She's got four teenagers, sorry, three teenagers and, and a newborn. She's a scientist. She has a career. She has a husband called Larry who works for the Teachers Union of Ireland, which is a trade union. And I mean, the book opens in a in a moment where Ireland feels entirely like Ireland of now, except there's just subtle changes, and there's a populist government in power, and there have been curbs to sort of the norms of de democracy. Um, the media is starting to be controlled, and and Larry is called in by the Garda National Services Bureau, who are the newly formed secret police, and they 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 you know the TUI are uh, the Teachers Union of Ireland. They're 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 setting up to they want to march and the GNSB put it to Larry, well, you need to prove to us that your act as a trade unionist is not seditious against the state. And that's that's sort of the beginning. And it sounds in many ways like it's a political novel. I actually don't believe it's a political novel. I think that it, there are politics in the book and it seems to have captured something of the moment now. But to me, this book is fundamentally about, about, about what Ailish is trying to deal with, of trying to make sense of reality, trying to make sense of the known world when it's actually no longer known and really it's about grief it seems to me in the back of your mind though and um, did you have this rise of the far right in europe you know i mean it's impossible as a citizen not to feel all these anxieties that we're all feeling and these these things press into the work and i allow them to enter the, in, in, into the work i think that i think that fiction should capture not just sort of the the sort of eternal things that I'm interested in, the age-old questions of, of, of life and death and power and powerlessness, but also what's going on in the world now. And so what I did with this book was to shape it in such a way that it could, it could, it could speak to the moment, it could speak to what's coming and perhaps what's past and how, and how these things are just always reoccurring. And um, I think fiction should be counterfactual. It should be allowed to ask these kinds of questions. Well, the Guardian said it's a novel written to jolt the reader awake. The Irish examiner said, I don't know when I last read a book that left me as shaken and disturbed. And this is one of the most important novels of 2023, they wrote. Um, you've said it's an attempt at radical empathy. Is it intended to be a cautionary tale? Perhaps it is. Uh, you know, some people read the book and they, they, they're like, Prophet Song, ah, he's warning us about, you know, how what what comes next if if we're not careful you can read it that way some people see it as a simulation of events that other people around the world are going through and maybe maybe that uh maybe we can understand that for ourselves and there is that radical empathy aspect in the book i wanted to understand for myself you know what why would somebody take those boats that, that we see on the news what is it that would make somebody get on that boat 
with their kids. I'm a dad. What an extraordinary decision to make. And and for me to answer that question, I I I almost had to write that write the book to understand that, because. Um, I think that we all have a failure of imagination, particularly with the spectacle as we watch the news. We're just bombarded with the spectacle, and that spectacle is in itself a simplicity um, because we're, you know, we're each a universe to ourselves. And and to enter into into other people and to fully inhabit their worlds, fiction can do that, and fiction can bypass the self defenses that we put up as citizens. It's just it can really allow us to to truly inhabit another consciousness. And I wanted to to understand these kind of things for myself. And what about um, the riots last week in Ireland, led by far-right protesters in Dublin after a stabbing outside of a school? Um, that seems a shocking thing to have happened in Ireland. Yeah, I mean, both events were were were, were disturbing and shocking and 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 sad. And I, I mean, I, I was I was at a book signing on Thursday night, and somebody came up to me, and they said, "Have you seen the news?" And I said, "I haven't." And and she said, um, "Well, you, your book looks like it's starting to come true." And I mean, I would disagree with that because Prophet Song is a work of fiction. And um, but uh, I think that we're probably quite shocked in Ireland because we've always said, well, we do not have a far right here. That's just not part of the political sort of spectrum in Ireland. But I don't, I don't think we can say that now. So this is a new we're we're at, we're at a new step, a new place. What do you think about um, your book being called The Irish Offspring to The Handmaid's Tale and 1984? I mean, when people make comparisons like that, you kind of, you know, you don't truly believe them because it, it seems these are these are truly great novels. Um, uh, you know, at the same time, I would also say they're very political books, and you know, Prophet Song does more than the political, in, at least in, to my mind. But it's it's still an honor, and you know, everything that's come my way with this book, it, it, it's it just feels a little magical to me. Um, it, it feels like. Like, you know, as I said, I mean, I'm in some sort of strange alternate reality at the moment and, and the, the known world has just slipped away. And you wouldn't say no to a hit television series based on the novel, I'm guessing. Oh, my gosh. That's, you'll have to talk to my agent about that. <laughs> and you said before that you don't choose the novel. The novel chooses you. Crisis yeah. and trauma are often at the heart of your stories, uh, like the Irish potato famine in Grace. What do you think that says about you? Oh, it's just I'm probably just this really difficult, uh, difficult guy who's not happy unless he's he's challenging himself with the most difficult material. I mean, I'm just really interested in as a writer, but how we define ourselves as people, because in life, the unwanted is always knocking on our door and we must constantly, re you know, uh, recombine ourselves. We're, you know, we're constantly re-encountering who we are and trying to define ourselves by, by what the things we must overcome. And we live in a world that's really, you know, we, we are these thinking, feeling creatures, but the world that we find ourselves in is this enormous, implacable, cold machine. It, and, and, and these forces are, are just always beyond us. And all my books are about this, one thing meeting the other. You know, we trapped in our lives, trying to make sense of ourselves within this thing that we don't understand fully. And it's like we're all in the labyrinth. And, 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 and every book, I'm just getting at that every time, just in different ways. And Paul, you're the fifth Irish writer to win the Booker. There were four Irish authors on this year's long list more than any um, previous year. We know Irish has a rich um, literary tradition, but there seems to be a lot of exciting fiction coming out of the country right now. Why do you think that is? It's a good question. And I think it'll be easy to answer this in 20 or 30 or 50 years time when there's a sense of perspective, but there's definitely a big energy going on. And it's possibly related to post-Celtic Tiger, it's related to the fact that we're no longer that sort of old identity of us as a, as a distinctly Catholic country. I would say that culturally we are we are probably post-Catholic. Um, we are very European. We are at that nexus between the States and Britain. And so we're, we're a very modern protean country. And I think the writers are tapping into that energy of Ireland being a sort of a very global uh, country now and no longer that sort of small parochial little pokey place with the you know the cup of tea on the table i think i think that that that's just gone and even as a writer you know when i'm writing a prophet song to me that it, it is in many ways a global novel it's not it's 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 set in ireland it's captured in the sort of the universal of ireland but it's 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 reaching into things that are beyond us and so writers are just tapping into all these energies now and it's a different world 
Paul Lynch, £50,000 of prize money. Any idea what you're going to spend it on? Yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to spend it on. I have a tracker mortgage that's gone up 75% since um, since last year. So that's, that's just, sorry, but, yeah, you know, half it's spent already on and covering the mortgage for the for the year. You know, it's like um, I'm like everybody else. I have a, I have a house and a mortgage and, uh, um, you know, it, 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 the, the ECB rate hikes have been very punishing and it's been very hard. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very welcome. Okay, Paul Lynch, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thanks, Eve. It's great to talk to you again.